Hello community! Today we will talk about how to denoise your photos. And you're not gonna believe it, but we're gonna use auto encoder for this particular task. So here we go. How to denoise a photo. Well, you are familiar with a convolutional neural network. Everything that it has to do with vision is based on a CNN. Now here we see the original Lunet 5, I think it's from 1998, I suppose. So way back in the times. And as you can see the convolution, so we have here an input, this is a 32 pixel times 32 pixels. And then we have a convolution and then subsampling and another convolution, another subsampling, and then we have the fully connections. So this is the typical convolutional neural network and you're not gonna believe it. We're gonna use exactly this model to define a convolutional autoencoder. But since we are in 2022, in September 22 almost, we do it with TensorFlow and we have the beauty of Keras where we have predefined layers for us. So this is it. This lines of code here, you see we have a self encoder, a sequential Keras model. We have a layer input. Well, always 28 pixels times 28 pixels. And then we have a convolutional layer. And then we have another convolutional layer with a lower dimension. And then we go back, we have a decoder. Again, a sequential model. We have convolution two-dimensional transpose decoder, another transpose, and we have a sigmoid output function. This is it. This is the beauty of TensorFlow Keras if you have a high-label API, if everything has been programmed for you. So you might say, okay, let's do it a little bit more complicated. Okay, for you here. This is exactly the API that we're going to use. TensorFlow, Keras, a layer, and we have a convolutional 2D layer. And the task of this layer, it creates a convolutional kernel that is convoluted with the layer input to produce a tensor of outputs. You might say, wow, eh? And if yes, of course, we have not only convolution layers, we have also pooling layers. If you want to have a look, here is the link if you want to have a preview how the pooling layers work. But let's go back to the convolution layer. So as you can see, we have a lot of parameter and you have to get these parameters right. Otherwise, you are in trouble. And as you can see here, on the top, we have some parameters already predefined, but now for us, it is easy. Let me show you why. Now, we, you have to take care about more or less the first four. Now, filters. Filters is more or less an integer, gives you the dimensionality of the output space. This means the number of output filters in a convolution. Now, the kernel size, you're not gonna believe it. It's an integer, a tuple, or a list of two integers, specifying the height and the width of the two-dimensional convolutional window. Unbelievable. The strides can be a single integer in all spatial dimension, and this is exactly where the window strides over your data set. And padding. You can have values or same. Beautiful. The other one you are familiar with, with the kernel initializer, I showed you in my last video, the kernel regularizer and the, con the constraint factor. We know how to set this so beautiful. This is it. This is no problem at all. And we're going to use an autoencoder. And you might say, hey, this is great, but how is it possible that we have an autoencoder here? Now, remember, the basic principle of an autoencoder is you have an input space, you have some magic box in your network, and you have a low dimensional latent space where you have all the information content of the input space still available, condensed, compressed, encoded, auto-encoded. Now, the piece of neural network, last time I showed you we had a feedforward neural network with dense layers. Now we have a convolutional neural network with in two dimension, of course. And it is the same. If we apply an autoencoder, we have a run from the input space through the neural network to the latent space. We train some weights and then we have a look here from the other side like a flashlight, we shine through the pattern of the latent space and we want to reconstruct the information in the input space. We will have a delta to the original uh, input, but no problem. We have uh, an error here and we have some backpropagation and we have a loss function and the learning of the neural network, like any neural network is done by the loss function. You minimize the loss function and ping pong, ping pong, you get it, unbelievable. You have then finally an autoencoder defined for you 
an auto encoder that works perfectly on a two-dimensional grid. And our two-dimensional grid is, and you're not going to believe it, a photo. So to answer your question, how to denoise a photo with an autoencoder with a in TensorFlow, with Keras API, with our layers, and we have the layers for this specific task already programmed for us. And the next step, I'm going to show you in the Colab notebook how easy it is to do a denoising of photos. And here we are again in the Colab notebook. This is where we left out the last time where I showed you how a low dimensional encoding of our fashion pictures look like, how we can decode it back from the original if we train the network. And today we're going to do image denoising with an autoencoder. Now, isn't that beautiful? And that you can see something, we're going to increase it a little bit. Here we go. So we do an autoencoder can also be trained to remove noise from images. This is an official Keras notebook. I'll leave the link for you in the description. You can follow along with me if you want. So we have the fashion data set and we just download at first. First step, we download the data. They are already available for us. Beautiful. Then we do the X-train and the X-test separation. Yes, here we go. And you know what? Then we add some random noise to the images. This is just a noise factor with some random normal noise. You do not have to worry about this at all. Easy. And let's have a look at the images. How do our images look like now? And as you can see here now in our 25 pixel time, 25 pixel visualization. Okay, our shoe is really noisy. There's a lot of noise. Here, our Lee t-shirt, hardly available that I can match it that it is a Lee t-shirt. Pair of trousers heavily distorted. So what we can do, we can define a convolutional autoencoder. I already showed you. Yes, you know it. What we're going to do, we define here a class where we have a TensorFlow Keras sequential model as an encoder and we have a Teras TensorFlow Keras sequential model as a decoder. So, of course, our input shape is 28 pixels times 28 pixels. I already showed you the convolutional 2D layer. We have ReLU as an activation function and padding is the same. And then we have, we go from 16 units to eight dimensions and then we go back from eight to 16 in our decoder that is also a sequential model and then we have an activation of course of sigmoid like in the last time we remember dimensionality reduction where was our dim, dim model here wait 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 where is it come on here class order encoder we had the same we had here our ReLU function in the decoder ReLU, and then we had our sigmoid function. And this is more or less exactly the same what we're going to do now. So this is it. Then we have, yeah, we compute, of course, everything. So let's do this. Let's see how we do now the compile. You know, if we have optimized as Adam and our loss is a mean square error. And then here we go. Let's go for 10 epochs. And as you can see, after 10 epochs, we are done. I'm working here on a CPU so that we do not use the free GPU on call app. Maybe somebody else will need it. And as you can see here, our training loss in blue and our validation loss in yellow. Yeah, that looks good. And as always, remember, we can take a summary of the encoder and of the decoder model. So here we look at the encoder. And surprisingly, we have two convolutional, two-dimensional layers. Here is the output shape, and here is the other one. This is the number of three parameters, and the same we can do if we look back with the decoder. Remember, you look from the input space to the latent space, and with the decoder, you look from the latent space back to the input space, and you can compare easily the delta, the error you have to reconstruct the correct information in the input space. You do the backpropagation, you have that the weights of the network are learned, and this is it. Now, again, as I showed you in my last video on dimensionality reduction mechanism with autoencoder, here we have the same. We have here our autoencoder, we have now the encoder, then we test our noisy images. And then we do now 
take this element here, we have a name for it, encoded images, and then we do the reverse. We look now back from the Latin space to the input space, and we say autoencoder now decode, so go back from Latin space to input space with our encoded images. And of course we have NumPy because we are running in TensorFlow, yuppie. And then you just say, okay, show me the pictures. How do they look like? And here we have our pictures. You see here a set of seven pictures, I suppose. So this was the noisy picture that we generated. And this out of the noise we reconstructed here. Let's do it a little bit smaller so that you can see both of them at the same time. So this was the noisy picture and this is our reconstructed picture. This is what our convolutional two-dimensional autoencoder achieved within seconds. And I was just using the CPU. So you can really, really do this very fast. Of course, I used only 28 times 28 pixels, but if you want to use, I don't know, 5,000 times, times 5,000 pixels, I would suppose you take a GPU or maybe multiple GPUs, but you can see the noising a picture uh, autoencoder. Beautiful, beautiful application. Well, of course, the Lee t-shirt here from the noise, you do not reconstruct the Lee writing exactly, but yes, of course, the quality of those pixels is not so stunning, but you can see we get rid of all the noise. Uh, wait a second. Where is it? Here. Zip. And if we zip to the different t-shirts with the different patterns, you can see here, with the amount of noise we put in the picture, it was really hard to declassify the noise, but I think it did a great job here. Well, here, if you have a cowl <laughs> as a pattern on your t-shirt, well, then it gets a little bit complicated, but otherwise, huh, this looks good. And I know it is so easy. You're going to tell me, hey, isn't this too easy? This this is it. You can define here a complete denoise autoencoder just with some lines of code if you use TensorFlow and Keras. Well, this is the beauty of 2022. We use here really some intelligent formulation. Keras has so many things reprogrammed and programmed for us. We just have to use it. And as you can see here, if you uh, leave the cursor on the convolutional 2D transpose layer definition, you see exactly your parameters that I showed you already some minutes before, but it is that easy and you can build your own models. If you have specific tasks, add some other layers, do whatever you like. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece to experiment yourself. You can construct here your layers like you do with a Lego. You can build it up, define your complexity and you train the model and it is done so beautifully. So the second part of autoencoder after dimensionality reduction is now here denoising as you can see within seconds, beautiful, we achieved what we were looking for. And you might say, okay, what about variational autoencoders? Huh? Can we have a demonstration for this? Well, I'm currently working on this. I do not promise you this, but maybe if you're lucky, you will also get some, some nice video, I hope, about variational autoencoder, the latest step in autoencoders, the most advanced mathematics and coding. And yeah, why not? Maybe we will have a look at this. I see you in the next video.